Now, so I'm just going to, I'm going to figure out, um, um, ah, I need to, I need to be able to share my screen. So I think I need you to stop sharing so I can start. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Right. Let me figure this out. So sorry, everyone on our, on our corporate devices, we're not allowed to use zoom. So I've had to boot up my old, my old MacBook. Um, so I'm just relearning, <laughs> I'm relearning, um, OS 10 as we, as we speak, hopefully that should, that should work. Yeah. Yeah, that's all come through. Marvelous. So, um, so thank you for inviting me on. And, and today I'm here to talk to you about our journey uh, to, to implement what we're calling the fridge. So some people are curious to know about, about the name and where it all came from. Um, and I'd like to say there's some sort of high minded philosophical reason behind it. But we went out to, to people all across the business and, and ended up with a short list of, I believe, 186 names that people had suggested when we were looking for something a little bit different. Um, the fridge is the one that really stuck. And, and the more that we talked about it with people and we started to hear stories about what was happening in people's local offices with people, you know, gathering around the fridge, um, sharing, you know, sticking stuff up on the fridge notices and, and, and achievements, um, it all really started to come to life. Um, but the reason that we came here in the first place uh, is because of this. So learning in raw mail has always been complicated you know we're an organization of 150,000 people of of around sort of 1200 to 1400 sites um, and there's an awful awful lot of complexity um, as you may or may not be aware uh, we're a regulated industry so we've got we've got all of that side of things we've got all of the various pieces of technical training that supports frontline operations um, but then we've also we've also got you know all of our professional functions who, who in many ways are almost professional services businesses by themselves um, given the sense of scale and you know what we really found was that that the implementation of success factors that we did um, God, five years ago now solved a lot of problems of the time and most of our problems at the time were focused on compliance that was our big gap and our big challenge um, and as a result, you know, that's where our implementation focused. And, and while it did a great job of making sure the business was compliant, it didn't do a great job of, of helping people navigate the learning experience. Um, you know, really, the, the core focus of our learning function here at Royal Mail is, is in those frontline manager operational roles. The operation is our business. And the frontline managers are the people that really drive value and enable the magic of post arriving overnight to happen. So we wanted to focus around several key areas, right? So three principles about content being simple to find, being hyper relevant and being fast to find. And we bundled those three things under, under the word experience. Now, where we started um, compliance terms with was with the world's, the world's um, I think it's fair to say blandest um, theming of success factors learning and you know we hadn't we hadn't given it the the love and tenderness it deserved over the years to really to really make the most of it but the the leap that we were really looking for in terms of experience was also about signaling you know so all of our corporate stuff internally is very gray it's very red and very sort of traditional and 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 heavy um, but that's not the kind of organization that we want to be and you know with all the challenges we've been through recently with with covid with privatization with union challenges and uh, as you may know we're in the middle of a, a large management restructure uh, we really see this as an opportunity to to change the tone uh, going forwards and that's why we're going from this to this um and you know as soon as we share this with colleagues inside the business um people smile and and for me that 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 instinctive reaction of people smiling and and noticing the difference is a huge a huge part of what this is about so i'm going to move us on to take a look at where we started right so we spent a lot of time talking to our operational management community so our core user base about the things that the things that really mattered to them so you know experience was the word that we heard the most people wanted smartphone access you know we've got a big move as part of the real to focus on self-service as we reduce the numbers of business partners out there supporting our operational managers how do we better enable those managers to support themselves through performance support and all of those good things um, we're deploying a set of leadership behaviors and our managers asked us how 
how they could understand them better and how they could align their own their own behaviors to them um, and there's also all of this other stuff um, sort of weaving around it around the tone of voice so so what we like to call pub talk um, so so you know that the language of the system matches the language of the people that we're reaching um, and some concepts floating around in terms of engagement so testing out elements of gamification with this population um, to see the level of buying we've got um, connecting digital badges through that to to recognize what people already know to reduce the time to competence and you know we're we're, we're an organization where traditionally there's a culture of long service um, and typically speaking we're not a qualification rich organization so how can we give people recognition um, for all of the things that they that they already know that they can already demonstrate um, and help give them a sense of pride in that um, but you know most importantly of all in many ways is this piece around community access and coaching and mentoring now we tried the community stuff out quite extensively in the in the old days of jam um, with some of our frontline colleagues so postmen and women um, who work behind the counters in delivery offices the places that you go to pick up your parcel um, if if you weren't in what we tried to deliver and there we had sort of 1400 to 2000 people who were all doing identical roles nationally um, but but who had no way of contacting each other and, and really it's a wonderful example of our frontline colleagues role modeling the behaviors that we're then applying to the leadership population so so it's really great to see that in terms of what's new for our people you know the mobile the mobile access is new for them um, gamification is a concept they haven't engaged with so far through learning at Royal Mail. Uh, digital credentials as we move down the line will be will be a big thing and the personalized learning journey is of course is of course the core focus. Now our project's broken down into three key phases. Um, at the moment this is where we are in MVP. So so we pushed the button last week um, and went live to um, just over a thousand ambassadors. So these are people who are out there in the business talking about the transformation journey that we're going through so they can be very senior operational leaders they can be people like me from the corporate center who are going out to do that um, or they can also be leaders at a more local level these are the people that are making the, the the transformation happen and they're the people bringing it to life so they're the people that we wanted to start with um, and in terms of the functionality that we're focusing on we've kept it very simple while we test things out and focusing in and around the resources that support that transformation journey, um, the ability to share experience with one another and the access to coaching. But alongside that, we've got, we've got the access to the leadership badges um, as well. So we're testing out, testing out that concept. Now, in terms of, in terms of success for the MVP, um, what we're talking about is users having access to learning that's engaging an individual and really seeing them take ownership, drive their own playlist, share those with others and shift the balance from top down centre out to, to grassroots up because people know their jobs a lot better than we do. Um, in terms of the user experience, the simplicity of it um, and the ease of navigation because our, our people do not have time. And you know we need to make things make things that fit into those those short sharp bursts of time that they do have. Uh, we want to see people sharing learning experiences um, and also recognizing the expertise um, among each other. Um, and we want to see whether people engage with digital badges. So, so, so we think we think that there's potential, but does it fit with our culture and where our culture is now and where our culture is going? Um, but you know the big one. As we're hitting this management reorganization, we need a smooth transition to self-service. So all of the work that we're going to be doing over the next sort of four to six weeks is about ensuring the support is in place uh, for those people. Now I'm going to attempt to change screens. So let's see, I'm going to stop the share and restart it to make sure that works nicely. Uh, and I should be able to take us straight over to, to the real life fridge wonderful um so as we've arrived straight into the platform you'll see that i'm greeted personally um if i clicked into this button here we'd have some some sort of motivational quotes about the change experience um, and of course we'd have the the wonderful video um, that you saw at the beginning this is something that we're particularly pleased with because our, our super talented uh, apprentice 
um, in the learning design team and um, cooked this up overnight a couple of weeks ago to to help us launch and it just it really does bring everything to life as we move down the landing screen uh, we've brought in that was helpful i don't want to be logged out um, we've brought in um the widgets to give a behavioral nudge around the amount of time that we've been spent learning and um, people people have been taking the mickey out of me as a learning professional for only having done 11 hours and 42 minutes learning in the last 12 months um, but as I've been pointing out to everybody, of course, as a learning professional, um, I focus most of my energy on informal learning that hasn't been tracked. So, so it's it's deliberate, honest gov. Um, but as we move down, what we're also doing is pulling in projects that other people are working on. So, so some of our colleagues have been bringing together this incredible animated version of our operational pipeline, uh, which really which really brings things to life, and it and it puts it in front of people in a way that we've struggled to. Um, with other platforms across across the group because when you think about our corporate platforms they're all very sort of clunky um, heavy duty and not very inspiring and engaging um, but something like this you know we can really see the platform of the pipeline literally coming to life in front of your eyes and understand you know if I work in a delivery office well what does the transformation look like for me um, you know this is the kind of thing that we're able then to to showcase more effectively um, through the wonderful platform that that we're building you know some of the things that that, that people really reflected on um, when we were talking about the way that we use success factors was about you know the ease of getting back to 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 things that have been recently consumed and and, and I guess, you know, I hate it when people say things like a Netflix style approach because it, it, it really winds me up. But but at the same time, it is that, you know, what have I what have I looked at recently? Um, and, you know, my colleagues in, in my immediate team, a wider team have currently been copying loads of recommendations um, for me when I've been going through testing the platform, finding stuff that finding stuff that I like and just having that ease of of, of pinging it straight on to people and making personal recommendations. Um, we've split the core experience into three when we think about use it, the here and now, how do you support the change story, grow it, which is going to be your personal development going forwards, um, and finally fix it, which is the performance support self-service area that, that we're accelerating to, to support that management reorganisation. So if I jump us into use it for a second, um, what you'll see is again we've, we've split it into three core experiences. So we've got We've got um, a mouse that isn't scrolling very nicely, so I'll use the scroll bar. Um, we've got the toolkit, and my toolkit is where you'll find the support materials to deliver the change story. Now, at the moment, um, our frontline managers, as well as our ambassadors, are going out and talking to frontline postmen and postwomen about the change that we're going through. And we've pulled together all of the materials into one simple place um, where they can access them, where they can feedback on them crucially um, to let us know what isn't isn't working out there in the field um, because we want to encourage that two-way that two-way debate now of course accessing resources and telling us what they're like is is one thing but we want to connect that into the community so the rehearsal room is is a social space that we've created and this is to get all of those people going through a common experience um, together into one place so um so Fordy Ford um very helpfully yesterday came in and shared a a cracking demonstration of of what's actually going on out there on the operational floor um as you've been working through a graffiti wall exercise so you can see um up on that poster that postmen and women have been walking up um through the day and, and you know popping their own suggestions onto that board um about how things can be improved and, and what might be getting in the in the way of things which is which is wonderful and we've with um, Fordy Ford having shared this um, already, we've then got um, colleagues um, from the centre who are working on programmes to support the operation, jumping in, recognising it um, and harking back to to previous roles when when they'd worked out there in the operation. And, you know, for us sort of bring that all to life and and integrating it with the content is is what's so powerful, because like a lot of other organisations, we've got dozens of dozens of social channels, dozens of email addresses. But it's that it's bringing stuff together at the at the point of need, um, and also getting the right people in. So for launch, we've had some of our senior operators jumping in ahead of time to to role model role model behaviours 
so that you know when people people sort of closer to the front line get in there they understand that it's a safe space and they also understand that that you know they can ask questions they can um support one another linking through to the final part of use it is personal coaching so we have a range of of ilm level five coaches um who who are really highly regarded in the business but but you know the, the sort of the old ways of accessing weren't that weren't amazing so what we've done for now is we've, we've really sort of reinvigorated the coaching profiles made everything much shinier simpler and and hooked it into the core learning experience um but we're going to be doing some more work in this area to make it to make it even simpler but just today it's a lot easier to go in find somebody and uh, get that get that coaching batch so jackie's jackie's somebody i know very well um having worked together over the years um and you'll see her full profile just coming straight through there um but something that i really want to show you just because there's been some really nice um work from our team internally here is in terms of the badge store so so this is where we're bringing our leadership behaviors to life so so we've recently launched a series of new leadership behaviors um, as part of this people transformation and cultural change of of the organization now typically these are things that have been very abstract in the past and and we've tried all different ways of of engaging people with them and explaining them um, but for this for this particular launch what we've tried to do is to break them down into into meaningful chunks so for each leadership behavior for inspire for example we've broken it down into five five substrands for each substrand we've got a definition and we've got an example of what good like good looks like as well as some supportive contents now as people work through this supportive contents um, we'll be awarding them a substrand badge and when they hit all five of the substrand badges they'll they'll achieve the overall badge and that will flow through into the leaderboard now we're keeping this very simple in the minimum viable product to test people's engagement and see you know do people gel with the idea of this we're a scorecard we're an organization that's heavily driven by scorecards and kpis um, but do people do people buy into it and engage with it in a learning space um, i really hope so when it looks as as beautiful as this um, but that's really you know our point for consideration before we before we take this more widely i've just done some really simple things uh, navigationally to allow us to jump around the badges and to keep those keep those links um rocking at the bottom to different parts of the system now obviously we do still have the day to day because the transformation is is a huge part of everything right now um but there are other requirements and you know success factors is still there um milling around in the background doing the heavy lifting so we're also building out um, my learning pages where, where we'll be pulling through sort of the mandatory day to day training, but crucially um, keeping it out of the way of the aspirational stuff. So we have a clear, a clear separation between the two. So so it, compliance remains important, but compliance no longer is the core driver um, of the of the system. So this is really a, a high level skip through and I guess you know in terms of in terms of how we got to what was a, a presentation that, that a colleague and I knocked together in PowerPoint where we mapped out a very high level site map um, just you know just a few months ago um, the pace of being able to implement what is uh, what is something brand new for us in terms of work zone um, and getting getting colleagues upskilled and blend and, and getting all of that in has been has been incredibly pain free um, as I think I think Sandy will attest as well and I think what's what's wonderful for me is that that you know I've got I've got my immediate team who who work in the learning design space um, who now um, because of the way that we structure our support model who are now able to blend together platform design and content design in, into one holistic practice um, whereas before you know when we were over in success factors land and and things were a little bit more heavy duty um, you know we weren't really given the free reign to do that um, so I'm going to suggest that that I feel like I've been talking quite a lot um, that I'll stop I'll stop sharing um, and at this point we can pause for questions James, we have a question. Um, would be great to know how long did it take to configure the fridge on WorkZone? 
there's a complicated question <laughs> um so so i guess in i mean in terms of in terms of the in terms of the config it was super fast right sandeep i think you'll probably be able to answer that better than i can in terms of in terms of the work that was done um done by john and our technical support indeed um so um and yes, i guess as in kind of from a project perspective i guess as in um it was quite a focused project um, I think there were resources that were planned and prepared on both sides to essentially be able to achieve these. And I think what we looked at was for probably about, um, I would say between six to 10 weeks, including some of the wait time that we had in the beginning um, is probably what it took for, um, for this implementation. A typical implementation timeline that we typically suggest is falls between 10 to 14 weeks. Yeah, I do. I do. I do recall that the timeline that we ended up having to implement was was certainly at the very bottom end of your recommendation, if not below it, Sandy. It so sorry, sorry for the grey hairs we've caused through that. Below the lowest. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, then another question. How does WorkZone HR differ from Jam? Um, I can probably answer that. Um, so uh, WorkZone HR is SAP's experience uh, platform, essentially the experience layer that SAP is bringing in as part of the, the human experience management uh, transition that we're in. Um, what this provides is it has all of JAM capabilities, but beyond that, it brings in a lot more additional integration capabilities, um, a lot of out of the box integration with other SAP products, as well as other, um, other external products. Um, and I think we'll, we'll take some of these questions and then I'm gonna just walk through the architecture and what this looks like in a few minutes as well. Um, but I think I'll just take any questions that we have for uh, James first before I get into the work zone and blend answers. Um, a question from Daniel, uh, do you use a learning experience platform such as Blend alongside this? Um, yes, the answer is yes, James, I can answer this for you. <laughs> um, Thank you. Does, um, let's take Blend. Um, that is, so what we saw was SAP WorkZone with Blend um, as the experience layer kind of within uh, SAP WorkZone, which connects into SuccessFactors learning and pulls data out of there as well. How customizable is SAP WorkZone? And James, I'm going to park that question for when I go through a couple yeah. of slides. Um, question from Paul. How have the Royal Mail team found using WorkZone versus SAP Jam capabilities when it comes to design, page creation, as well as group creation as part of Blend? Uh, so that's a that's a that's a really good question. So I think I think let's be honest, Sandy. We had a we had a couple of quirks, didn't we? <laughs> With a few buttons that that um that SAP had 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 moved or, or weren't quite there in the first release. But but what I'd say is by and large the experience as you know as somebody who's experienced with working with Jam, um, it's it's virtually an identical experience in in terms of the design. I mean there are of course some improvements, um, but in terms of you know. Um, my apprentice Anya, who who hadn't really been involved in the core of this project, um, I needed to pull her on board really quickly to to sort some some groups or workspaces. I'm trying to get into the lingo now, um, and she was able to just pick it pick it up as a previous Jam administrator. So it was a really simple transition from that side. Thank you. Um, there's a question from Rebecca. You've referenced SAP Jam. Does Blend work with Microsoft Teams too? Um, and I can answer that as I get into my slides in a few minutes. Um, question from Gianluca, what's the most complex part in setting up a project like this? Design, concept, configuration, change management? Wow, that's a, that's a question, isn't it, Sandeep? <laughs> um, <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it probably ultimately depends on your requirements, right? So, so I think, you know, on this occasion, we had a hyper-focused set of requirements, um, but we had very little, very little time. So I think the sequencing was our biggest challenge because in, in some regards we were working some things back to front. Um, but I don't think, you know, the technical side, the technical side was particularly, particularly overwhelming. And I think the familiarity of of work zone to jam made it quite easy for us to to then turn the user the user stories into reality um uh, and i guess you know the thing for me that also that also helped is in, in terms of the way that 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 
blend sort of <laughs> this is where I'm going to use all the long, wrong language but sort of just sort of you know from from my perspective it seems to integrate so simply um you know in terms of thinking through the design um it, it's again it's it's kind of that hybrid of, of of jam design web design and and sort of traditional platform and content design all coming together so 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 yeah for us I think you know if we'd had a regular <laughs> a regular amount of time to run the project Sandeep I think we all would have been um completely chilled indeed um okay there's a question from lionel what would be your measure of success how do you know the mvp is getting the attention it deserves yeah that's a very good that's a very good question so we have got some we have got some sort of traditional um uptake um and engagement metrics and we've got some feedback mechanisms built in throughout the platform um we've been doing a lot of um exec level engagement so we were presenting to 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 some of our colleagues from the executive board yesterday um and 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 honestly uh, see one of our colleagues who will remain nameless uh, bouncing up and down um like a like a child who's eaten too many sweets um was was wonderful um, just to see how excited they are about it um what we have to recognize is that is that um our management review <laughs> uh, preferencing process closed last friday um and outcomes will be delivered in december we are at our operational peak. Um, it, it is, and we've got COVID going on. So we are, at, we are at really, you know, thinking about it in many ways, the worst possible time to be doing this. However, the challenge that we're going to face in Q4 in terms of supporting our frontline operators through the organizational change is going to be the biggest change we've faced as a business um, since I've been here. Um, so, so we're trying to target the feedback into people who are able to give us time. And we've got a community of practice, which is a diagonal slice of, of operational leaders down from the most senior leaders in operations at director level um, down to people who are at the frontline coal face. So we're really relying on people who've engaged with the process to help support us in gathering feedback as we move out of MVP and, and fingers crossed into phase two. Thanks, James. Um, question from Jade. We are considering moving from Jam Basic to a better version of Jam. Would you advise that we rather use WorkZone instead? I think that's a fascinating question, isn't it, Sandy? Because that's that's I don't that's basically the situation we were in in many ways. So so for for us it, it was a matter of you know the conversation with Adam as our as our IT portfolio director was was in terms of, of figuring out how commercial stack up on SAP side in terms of the licensing, given that given that obviously work zone is the new shiny thing, um, but also thinking about what what we're planning to do in a, in the next three to five. Now, everybody's everybody's situation is going to be slightly different in that regard. Um, but for us, um, it was a very time pressured choice. Um, but but philosophically, it was a clear choice um, to 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 make the jump to work zone, rather than making two jumps. Absolutely, and I completely agree with that. That I think uh, it's probably worth I think discussing with somebody uh, like within the SAP account team or something to see what fits best for that organization. Um, so I think obviously work zone is where a lot of new development and where the SAP future around collaboration portals going. Uh, but at the same time, Jam has its place today as well. So I think it's probably best having a more informed discussion around the reality of your organization um, and everything else that comes as part of that. Um, there's a question from RT. Does the WorkZone app allow access to Success Factors learning content, or does it also need a separate app? I can answer that. It does require a separate app. So your success, the WorkZone presents the, the presentation layer. The WorkZone app will present the presentation layer, um, and if you launch any content, it will launch the Success Factors learning app. So it does require the separate app. I'm going to take a couple more questions. I'll then essentially move to the slides to just cover the, the architecture piece as well, because that will answer a lot of the questions that are coming up here. Um, and then we can try and cover any remaining questions. Otherwise, we'll follow up with the answers um, separately as well. So, um, so I'll take a couple more questions, which are, sorry. Where do we stand from a license perspective with WorkZone? It does require a separate license, so something probably both best worth discussing with your SAP account exec um, to look at that. Can you use Teams or do you have to use SAP Jam? Um, 
work zone, so this, this was more around low, what we were looking at was the work zone for HR. Work zone for HR does have an integration into Microsoft Teams. So any organization that's using Microsoft Teams, everything that we just saw, all of that experience can be brought in into Microsoft Teams if you're using work zone for HR. Work zone for HR provides that whole, the, the, the experience, the creation of the journey, um, the portal pages. For, but for organizations who want it within Microsoft Teams in the flow of work, you are able to embed these experiences, these pages then within Microsoft Teams. Um, and we'll take two more questions. <coughs> Do all of the colleagues in Royal Mail have access to Blend or have you refined it to just give access to managers and above? Um, so, so, so that's a that's a point in time question. So, so as of today, um, it's a it's a limited audience of of um, just over a thousand people for for MVP. Um, phase two, if MVP is successful, um, rolls out to to the entire management population. Um, if phase two is successful, and um, we then roll out to 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 all the frontline colleagues as well. Uh, obviously, there is quite a jump in licensing and investment. Um, so we're staggering it. We're staggering it that way in terms of the immediate need rather than as a way of excluding frontline staff. What I would say is, <laughs> on a slightly separate note, um, I'm still maintaining a, a population of around two and a half thousand to three thousand frontline colleagues who are in work zone but who aren't in blend. So I've effectively moved those across as a business as usual thing while we're while we're experimenting with with sort of work zone and blend in that in that transformation space. And James, there's a related question to this, which is that I appreciate you're just in pilot phase, but it would be good to understand your future plans. Yeah, so 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 the future plans are are to roll out, um, roll out, <laughs> hopefully, um, and there are lots of lots of commercial conversations to be had uh, around this as well at pace, but but to expand out to our management population um, and to move into the space that I was describing as fix it. So that's the performance support self service. Um, guidance piece um, that that would have to happen very quickly um, but then we'd be moving into the space so we would further we would want to further development develop the coaching and mentoring um, elements um, but also crucially you know the core personal management leadership development space that we're we're badging us grow it so that's where we'll start to see um, high stakes badging coming in to, to supplement the low stakes badging around leadership behavior so so that we're getting into um some 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 really interesting heavy duty heavy duty content um the approach around gamification relies on the success of gamification at, at, at mvp stage um but there will be a solution around management and leadership developments um we're looking at some different ways of working with with content providers on on that i, I don't think i can say a lot more about that at the moment because of the because of the conversations we're having, um, but there is some incredibly exciting things happening in that space. And as soon as we're able to talk about them, we will certainly be shouting about it. And one last one. Were you able to integrate the existing Royal Mail Jam deployment into WorkZone? Yes, if I can answer that for you, that essentially yep. the, the Jam environment gets migrated into the work zone environment. So everything that you've got jam, there is a migration path. It all gets embedded and migrated across into, um, into work zone. So yes, that was part of it. Um, I am going to now just take a pause on the questions. We will answer every question. So if, as in keep the questions coming, um, I just need to talk about the architecture and how this fits in together. Uh, but once we've done that, we'll go back to the questions to answer any remaining questions. And along with when, um, after the session, we're also going to send out uh, the recording. Um, but if there are any unanswered questions or we'll try and see if we can put um, a written response to these questions as well and make that available to everyone, all participants as well. Um, so we'll take a look at that. So I'm just gonna take a pause. I'll share my screen. Let me know if you can see my screen. James or Sweena, if you can confirm. Yeah, it's come through perfectly. Excellent. Um, so, and thanks, James. Really pleased as well to be part of this journey that you guys are going through. It's really been fantastic to see all of this come together 
and here you kind of speak about it right from the point of what really triggered it um, to how we've really gone about it as well as the future plans. I'm really excited about, I guess, kind of what the next phase holds as well. Um, for everyone, right? And then there's been a few questions. So what, what were we looking at? Was that work zone? Was that learning? Was that blend, right? What is it that we were looking at? Um, the, so what blend is, is blend essentially blends the three platforms together and provides you that one unified experience, right? Um, as in, I assume that most of you are success factors learning customers or are aware of success factors learning. So SAP success factors, because learning provides that core learning management capabilities, um, everything from your formal learning management, your regulatory requirements, um, your reporting, your um, instructor-led and online course management, evaluations, everything, right? So that still remains there. We're not really changing any of that. <coughs> SAP work zone, um, that brings in, as I said, right? It's part of that SAP's transition to the human experience management, that bringing in that integration layer, bringing in that portal technology, which is able to create those experiences, which normally would take place in different platforms. So what we're looking at here is having that one unified platform, which is more persona based, which basically means based on the employee type, it is the, the views, what the user sees, how the user interacts, the systems that user interacts with can all be personalized. Um, and that again also provides out of the box integration with various SAP products that I'll talk about as well as external tools. So the main capability or the, the big power behind WorkZone is its ability to integrate with products, either existing SAP products or additional products and how easy it is to bring those experiences into a single platform and be able to join experiences which would typically be across different platforms. So then where does Blend fit in, right? Um, Blend really works as a content pack within SAP WorkZone, uh, which essentially means um, that you've got a platform that has the capability to do it. Blend forms as a learning content pack within this, which really brings in that learning experience within SAP WorkZone. So the ability to bring in any of your, to start with, your formal learning content right within a consumer grade interface within WorkZone, but at the same time, being able to look at your AI driven recommendations or personalized recommendations to be able to drive and really make learning relevant and personalized to the user. The ability to bring in content, not just from your formal learning systems, but also external resources. We know that learning takes place not just in a formal learning system, but learning place takes place on multiple other portals, for example, or even sites like TED.com, YouTube, et cetera, right? Many, many articles, websites, et cetera, that people constantly sharing articles, et cetera, on. So how do we bring this all together and ability to put that into structured uh, methods like learning paths, learning pathways to make those available to the users? So, just to get into a little bit more detail around the architecture, this slide may look a little technical, but I'm going to try and break it down to simplify it. What we see in the middle is SAP WorkZone, right? Provides all of the capabilities that we've talked about for WorkZone, sits on the SAP Cloud Platform, and has out-of-the-box integration with various SAP products, right? So all of these products provide content packs within SAP WorkZone, so you're able to bring these experiences in right within WorkZone and then personalize them based on who has access to these and who's supposed to be interacting with those experiences. But doesn't stop at just the SAP products. We've also got integration with over 160 different third-party services, including Office 365, Microsoft Teams, SharePoint, ServiceNow, right? A wide variety of platforms that you have open connectors with in being able to bring those experiences or bring in an integration to those platforms right within work zone, having one unified experience for your employees. And that's really where Blend comes in. Blend's one of the, um, Blend's an extension, a, an, a, a content pack that's available, which is that learning experience content pack, which integrates into SAP uh, work zone and essentially provides those learning capabilities, right? Blend then essentially takes care of content of working with learning integrations, whether it's with success factors learning, whether it is with any of the other content providers. We've done integration with a lot of learning systems and learning providers, as you can see there. But again, the framework that we provide allows us to really easily integrate into virtually any learning source and be able to bring content in. Some that have been extremely powerful in terms of being able to drive a real experience have been even video platforms, for example, which have quite often been a challenge to integrate into typical learning platforms. 
So when it comes to, when we look at um, Blend as a learning experience platform, right? Different customers using it. Um, there are multiple capabilities, various functionalities using it uh, available. Um, and there's really very few that use all of the capabilities because the, the uh, learning as a high level process may remain similar, but the organizational culture, how you drive learning, that really varies from an organization to organization. Um, and that's really where we have these different capabilities, which and th through the configurable platform that works on for HR provides about being able to define these experiences, you can decide what capabilities or what features you want to use and how you want to use them. So things that Blend provides as key capabilities with WorkZone for HR is having that rich content library, ability to bring content from virtually any source into a single platform. When we start to bring this content into that platform, the ability to create curated learning paths Right? So your subject matter experts being able to combine the right content from different places and put that into a learning path for the employees. Right, The flexibility around the design of these pages, it's not just about replacing your logo and the color changes, but every element of the page, everything that you see on the page, and you've seen the, the Royal Mail system look fantastic, right? I think that looks really great. And it's really about being able to, uh, the limitations really there are your design and your thinking capabilities and how far you can stretch it really. Um, of course, I think being able to put that into the social learning context um, for those who want to use the social learning aspects, um, but also having this all available on a responsive mobile design as well. So, the, a very key focus, right, of the platform is personalization. And we look at personalization in three different ways. It's personalization to the users. So knowing what the user, who the user is, where they're at in the learning journey, where, where they belong in the organization, and being able to personalize it for them. The second element is personalization to the organization, to the company that's using it, right? And you've seen that with the platform on how you can really tailor the look and feel deliver the right messages, bring in that real transformation or real change within the organization, right? And the third aspect we look at is personalization to the topic. So where you have a topic-based workspace or a group, um, so whether it is the key skills within the organization, but then being able to curate and, and showcase resources right within that area. So where if I'm in a certain topic, being able to see courses and content that's associated with that topic, right? Um, quite often, I think in multiple learning systems, many learning systems, what we do is even if we have the ability to create these pages, we may have, for example, direct link that takes us to a pre-filtered catalog. But we, it's always about taking the user into a catalog, whereas here what we can bring is a pre-filtered catalog right within those different spaces, different pages. When we talk about the recommendations as well, the personalized recommendations, we'll look at a wide variety of recommendations. You can have your peer-to-peer -peer recommendations, you can have recommendations based on my network. So we look at not just the standard one-to-one -one recommendations, but looking at social recommendations. And the social recommendations comes from network, which is my manager, my employees, people in my department. What is the content that they are looking at, right? Because I want to know what's really going on, what's relevant, so that I'm actually being nudged to take some content. Right? Similarly, people like me, regardless of whether they're in my network or not. So people in uh, the same job code as me or people as the same shoe size as me, if you wanted to drive that, for example, right? Based on my interests, we ask the user what your interests are and present content to them, trending content based on that. Or for example, your skills or your competencies in success factors learning, uh, sorry, in success factors, the performance areas, based on the competencies that are associated with you being able to drive learning recommendations. And as I said, topic-based recommendations as well. So it's really this whole personalization engine, right? That fits in together, not just from a content perspective, but both the content and the platform and being able to drive that persona-based experience where depending on whether you are out in the field, whether you're uh, uh, on the shop floor or you're a corporate um, desk worker, right? Um, you can all you can drive different experiences through the capabilities of the two uh, integrated platforms. Here are some examples of again kind of different kind of designs that were put together on these pages over a period. So I'm just going to look through these. So really looking at that, what um, James talked about, right? The Netflix kind of experience. Now. 
what makes this the perfect LXP for SAP customers, right? It's built on SAP, it's built on SAP Cloud Platform hosted within in the SAP data centers, right? So it never really, your data never leaves the SAP data centers. So one from a data perspective, it's all in one place, stays in one place, right? Um, it's been built with Success Factors customers. So it's been co-developed with Success Factors customers and it's built specifically for Success Factors learning and work zone and jam products. Um, so it's specifically been built for that, uh, which basically means that we look to extend the capabilities to get the maximum value out of those products, right? The very powerful content aggregation and curation engine means that you have the ability to bring in content from all of these wide variety of sources all into one platform and drive that one true learning experience that you would like to drive. And it's a simplified technology map. It's one less system to access. Of course, you've got choices in terms of different learning experience platforms, different capabilities, but with the combination of WorkZone and Blend, what we're able to do is bring the user into the platform that links into the various platforms that you may be using, that is able to draw content from the various areas. If we can provide an engaging learning system um, within through the, through the capabilities of these platforms. When users come into the platform, they'll also be able to take care of or process leave requests or um, other approvals that they need to take, whether it's finance or whether it's travel requests, right? Being able to approve those as well, essentially engaging um, and improving the response times and engaging the users, not just with the learning system, but as a result of that learning can be the driver in engaging users into your wider processes that fit into the platform as well. So yeah, hopefully that was useful and hopefully that answered some of the questions that were in the chat around how the interactions, um, how the, the three platforms, so Success Factors Learning, WorkZone and Blend, how they fit in, how they blend into a single platform. When we saw James present, they, we were just looking at one platform and that's really where even the name Blend comes from. It's really about blending the experiences of these various platforms into really one true experience. And that's what we were looking at. So from an end user perspective, you're accessing one platform, one system, but of course it's powered through, um, it's powered through the combination of three platforms, taking the best out of the three platforms and putting that into one experience. Okay, hopefully that was useful and answered some of the questions. I'll go back into Q and A and look at any other questions that haven't yet been answered. Um, to see um, if we can answer those. Um, of course, if there's more questions, then let them come as well. So it's a question from, um, and James, there are about 23 open questions. So there are a few more questions for us to answer. Um, and we may not be able to get through all of them, but we'll try to get through as many as we can. So question from Gianluca, what would be great to know how long did it take to configure? I think we answered that already. Um, how does WorkZone HR differ from Jam? Um, so WorkZone for HR has all of Jam's capabilities, but it goes beyond Jam based on what I was talking about, right? So um, the, the integration capabilities within WorkZone have been amplified multifolds compared to what it used to be in Jam. Um, it has a lot of out of the box integration. So the not just the integration capability to other custom systems that you may have or custom integrations, but also existing standardized platforms, whether it's existing SAP platforms or whether it's the uh, whether it's the 160 plus third party platforms that we have, right? So the out of the box integration capabilities that it provides are fantastic, are great. But also what WorkZone for HR provides is the ability to create guided experiences that can span across multiple platforms. So I'll give you a very simple example. Um, and this is again, it's an example. It's currently not available through Blend, um, but I believe it is part of the SAP work zone roadmaps, et cetera. But it's just to give you an example. I've booked a learning. It's in a different city, right? If you're also using Concur, then the ability to essentially be able to book travel because the system already knows. So it may prompt you to be able to book travel, right? That's an example of a use case where experiences start to travel or kind of span across different platforms and be able to create that guided and a more intelligent experience that an employee can have uh, because the system starts to behave more intelligently. That's really where WorkZone provides. Okay, um, did you use a learning experience platform alongside like Blend? Yes, I think we answered that. How customizable is SAP WorkZone? Um, extremely flexible. I think we've um, kind of, when it comes to obviously 
Royal Mails was the first works on implementation um, kind of uh, to go live uh, globally as well as it was the first one for Blend in work zone as well. Um, Blend does exist in multiple JAM instances, multiple uh, organizations, but this was the first one for work zone. Um, it is extremely configurable in the sense that you've seen the pages and the designs. If you look at any other demonstration of work zone, you'll see it looking very different. And the, the different is what is really special about the platform. As I said, you can design these pages as you like, it depends upon your capabilities to design. Obviously, we provide support, et cetera, through that. But um, the, the flexibility that it provides, the theme manager to be able to control the colors and everything else is extremely powerful as well. James, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add on that specific piece. No, I guess, I guess, I guess just to agree, agree really, because I think, you know, as well, what 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 we did um, this time around was to was to um, get somebody for some for some sort of additional support on the design side purely because we wanted to make a real leap away from from the core raw mail experience and i think you know um what was really great was to see because um, i think let's let's face it sandeep i think i think ryan uh, provided some really constructive constructive challenges about the level of uh, personalization he wanted to be able to achieve um and certainly you know from a client perspective um we're able to meet them all so so it's been it's been immensely customizable um by by our standards absolutely completely agree and i think we did have a fantastic i think partner in ryan there as well to be able to help with those designs etc absolutely um so another question is there a way to test this out play around with this tool before making a decision to purchase um, Jane, I'd suggest that we're probably best to get in touch with your SAP account exec or with us a talent team, um, and we'll have to evaluate what that means. Um, so question from Nina, did you need to upgrade Jam in order to use Blend product? If yes, how easy was that? Um, it, so I'll answer the first part of the question, which is, do you, did you need to upgrade? Um, depends upon your Jam version. So Blend as a product works with Jam Advanced Plus, Jam Enterprise, or works on for HR. Um, Royal Mail were on Jam uh, Advanced version, not the Advanced Plus. So there was a need to upgrade. Um, technically, I believe it was uh, extremely easy and simple, uh, but I'll, James, I'll let you expand on how easy was that. I, I mean, it, it, it was it was phenomenally easy, and I guess from a from a change management perspective, for my business as usual people who who sort of woke up the next morning um, with work zone rather than jam. I mean, we literally gave them a notification at the top of the screen to say where it where it now says workspaces. You know, that's where your group used to be, um, and here's a, gu a guide to download the new app. Um, there was very little very little change management to be done. And a question from Gianluca, are you planning to extend the work zone approach to other HR processes? So that's a very interesting question. <laughs> um, so, so there is certainly some appetite um, among members, members of our HR community to, to do that. I think what, what's happened in this instance is that the needs of the people transformation have accelerated what what we're doing with learning ahead of um, the wider discussion around around our HR platforms. So so in many ways that that that's a question for another day. I think the excitement that we're seeing from HR leadership around what we're doing here um, will will naturally lead to interest though. Thanks, James. Um, unfortunately, we are at the top of the hour. There are still nineteen pending questions. As I said. We'll take a look at these questions. We'll try and put those together as uh, an FAQ or something we can send across um, when we later send the recording across as well. Um, James, I may need to reach out to you for some of these questions. Um, sure, no there's a Royal Mail input to be provided there as well. Uh, but um, really appreciate James taking the time and sharing with everyone um, uh, your journey, your experience uh, with the platforms. Um, and it's really exciting to see where I think uh, the, uh, to provide that starting point on what you had before we started and what we're now looking at, what, we're look, what we've delivered over these um, last three months or so, last couple of months, and what the future holds. It's really exciting, and I'm really pleased to be part of that um, along with yourselves. Um, so and thanks a lot for taking the time out, and thanks, everybody, for attending the session as well.
Okay, Sandeep. Excellent. All right. Stop the recording.